Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to the next episode of Django by Example. In this episode, we're going to talk about the structure of the Django web framework. Essentially, how does Django take a user's request for a specific page and turn it into a response, some HTML that contains all of the information that that page needs. This is a diagram, and we're just going to walk through each step of the diagram and explain it in general. Not going to get super specific uh, yet, but in the next video, we're going to create a new project and look at the project structure and see how each of the files uh, that are part of the project relates back to this diagram. So the first step in the diagram is the web browser. That's the end user that's trying to access a specific page on your website. You'll notice it's in gray because it's not part of Django. It's just one of those browsers probably on the screen, maybe it's somewhere on mobile, even on a television, wherever it might be. But it's some web browser that's trying to get a specific page. And so the part with the green background is Django that's going to handle the request from the web browser and in the end give it back to the web browser. So the first step on our journey is the URL dispatcher. And the job of the URL dispatcher is to take the URL that the web browser is trying to access and map it to the appropriate view. So for example, uh, the first example is slash, which would be the home page or the index page. So for example, just going to example.com. So in that case, we want to go to the view that's in charge of loading the home page. If they go to slash about, we want to go to the page with the about information, maybe information about the website. If they go to the page slash user and a slash and then some ID number, we want to show them information about a user, and whichever user they want to see is determined by the ID number. So for example, slash user slash one would show information about the user with ID one. So in all cases, it's going to take that and put it to the user page view, but the data that the view generates will vary based on which user we're trying to take a look at. We'll get back to that in just a second. Before we take a look at views, we're going to talk about templates and models first, because the view is essentially the bridge between models and templates, and I think it'll make more sense to do it this way. So a template is some HTML code that basically has some blanks in it, some you know data that needs to be filled in by the view. So if you take a look, for example, at this HTML, it looks fairly straightforward. Um, but if you look at the title, for example, it says about, and then it says user.name. So whichever user we're currently talking about, we want to find their name. We don't know which user it could be. It could be any user in our database. There could be millions of users in our database. But whichever user it is, we want to find their name. Same exact thing for the H1. And then in the paragraph text, we want to figure out how many friends this user has. So we can say user.friends.count. And the other part, user.friends.count, pipe, pluralize, will basically just give us an S if the count is not one or nothing if the count is one. So it'll say either friend or friends based on the count. Don't worry about that. We're going to get to that uh, later on, but we'll see an example of how that works in just a moment. So again, the template is basically just the HTML with a bunch of blanks that need to be filled in. Now models are definitions of data that we need to store in order to make our website work. So in that template, this was to show a page about a specific user. So we want to have a model that stores information about each user. So in the case of our application, very simple, the user just needs to have name, which is a char field, basically just some text and friends, which is a many to many field of type person, essentially just a list of other people that that user is friends with. Or I guess it should really say many to many field user instead. So it's just a list of users. All of this data is stored in the database. And you'll notice that the database is gray. This is not part of Django. You can use pretty much any database that you want. You can use SQLite, MySQL. You could even use a text file or XML. There's lots of different possibilities. For our example, we're going to use SQLite because it saves the entire database in a single file on the disk instead of being you know, a process that runs in the background. Uh, so essentially, the model is just a definition of data that needs to be stored in the database. And now we can get to the view. The view takes specific instances of models and puts them into templates. So for example, let's say that we have a user with name Noah, 
and friends is a list of other people or other users uh, with the names Eli and Max. So in this case, uh, we would go to say about, and we want to know the name of the user. Well, this particular user's name is Noah, so it would say Noah. Same for the heading, and for the paragraph, it would say, well, there's two people in that list, so it would say the user has two friends. The pluralized would put an S there. And indeed, we can see that when we insert that information, this is essentially what the page looks like. It puts in Noah for user.name, it puts in two for the number of friends that I have, and when I go to use pluralize, it will put an S because two should be plural, two friends, not two friend. And so finally, all of this data can go through the caching framework if you want to store data, although we're not going to use that. And it will go to the web browser. So you can see what it looks like at the end. The title, it says about Noah. Um, and then you have your heading that says Noah, and then it says this user has two friends. So that's essentially the, uh, the, the flow you would, in your web browser, request, for example, maybe example.com slash user slash one. Uh, it would go through the URL dispatcher, say, okay, you're trying to look up a specific user. It would grab the data for that specific user from the database and put it into the model. The view would then take the information from that user and put it into the template, aka the HTML, and then it would return the data from the template, which in this case is HTML with all of your data filled in, and the web browser can successfully render it. Now this may seem like a ton of stuff happening, but it's instantaneous. So just because there's a lot of steps doesn't mean that your website will be slow to load. This all happens incredibly quickly. Now in the next episode, we're going to create a project and take a look at the skeleton, essentially all of the files that Django generates for us, and we'll notice how uh, everything sort of works based on this diagram. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment uh, with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button and uh, continue on to the next episode to learn more about Django.